All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna share everything that you need to know about Google Ads, how to set up campaigns, how to set up ad groups, and then run these ads effectively so that you can get customers uh, in a very cost-effective manner. So uh, let's get into this video here today. I think a lot of people have been very confused with Google Ads. They always change up their interface. It can feel very overwhelming. Um, and so my goal today is to really simplify this as much as possible for you uh, and then help you make some decisions on the types of ads that you might want to be running, um, as well as some other features and you know things that might feel a little bit confusing. I want to clear all of that up in today's video. So let's go ahead and get into this now. Um, so I'm just on ads.google.com. Um, they have changed up quite a bit of the interface. And so if at some point in this video, you might say like, hey, this looks different than my page, um, that's okay. Uh, but the overall details and things we'll be discussing today are going to be very similar, regardless of what page you end up on, okay? Um, and towards the end, I will share some of those tactics for getting customers uh, for a very good price and, and kind of how to optimize ads and some other marketing uh, tips as well. So. Uh, let's go ahead and click on start now. And so uh, they're going to throw us into this page here to create our first campaign with Google Ads. Um, so let's go through their process a little bit um, and create our first campaign. So I'm just going to enter our business name. So for this, um, uh, for this video, I'm just going to say Central Media, which is our marketing agency. I'm just going to make an ad for our marketing agency uh, for other people who are looking to, to market uh, their business. Um, and then I'll put in our site, centralmedia.com. And then we can click on next. All right, so now what they're going to do is give us an option to link our accounts. So we can link our YouTube channel, mobile app, uh, our Google business profile, or our phone number. Um, you know, I'm going to skip these for now. It, it will make it a little bit easier for you if you want to run various different types of ads uh, in the future, but you can always go back and add these later as well. But you know, if you have some of these, feel free to add them in uh, right now if you would like to. Um, also, you know, uh, I do recommend either following along on like another tab for this video, or even just take out a pen and a piece of paper and write some things down as we go through here so that um, you can kind of follow along. All right, so I'm just gonna click uh, skip here. All right, so now we're identifying what the goal of our campaign is, um, and you can set up different goals. Uh, you can create different campaigns. So um, don't worry as well on this, like if, if you're stressed out and you don't know which one to click, that, that's okay. Uh, I'll just kind of break some of these down here for you. So purchases can be anything uh, like physical products. So if you're selling like, you know, things on Shopify, um, you have an e-commerce business, that would be the option that you would probably choose, um, or even like services. Like I'm going to use uh, purchases here, even though we're selling services for our marketing agency. Um, and then looking at these two here, submit lead form and phone call leads. This is really useful for people who maybe you have a service-based business in a local area, like a landscaping company, a plumbing company, um, something along those lines. You probably just want to collect leads, right? Maybe phone numbers, uh, emails, so that you can go ahead and follow up with them. Um, so if you're in any type of sales, this could be really useful for just basically collecting leads um, and either having them call you or you calling them or getting their contact info in some way. Um, and then we have things like page views and brand awareness, and we can even click on see more. And we have other options that it might be very specific to you. Like if you have a mobile app and you want people to download your app, you would choose that as the goal for your campaign. Um, and then we have very specific types of leads as well. If we're looking for, you know, people to get directions to our um, company, to our business, then we could click on that. Um, so these are all of our different options here. I'm just going to click on purchases uh, for this one, and then I'm going to continue. So I'm going to click on next. Okay. And so now we're at a point where, um, and I, I've set up ads for like many of our clients and stuff. And every time I do this, it's like a different page pops up. So if yours is different from this, uh, that's all right. Um, but they've done a lot of things. They've changed up the interface a lot and it's, it's kind of annoying to me. So they want us to select themes because they want to make this as simple as possible. But when they try to make things simple, it also like is hard to run ads effectively. So what I'm going to do is if you see these little three dots up here, this is what I'm going to click on and I'm going to view other types of campaigns because right now they have us in what's called their performance max campaign, which is they want you to run ads on everything. They want you to run ads on YouTube. They want you to run ads as display ads, search ads, um, like Gmail ads. They want you running ads everywhere because Google just wants you to spend tons of money. All right. Um, and so 
I'm going to click on view other campaign types, and this is going to give me more flexibility on uh, the specific ad that I want to run for my marketing agency. So you see here, uh, if, if you can click on those three dots and it takes you to this page, you're on the right page. Okay. Um, and if you have problems, leave comments down below and I'll try to respond or feel free to message me on uh, Instagram or uh, on, on Twitter as well. And I'll try to help you out, but just be warned. I'm, I'm pretty busy, so I'll, I'll do my best. Um, but anyway, so the default that Google recommends is performance max and where they'll basically like create an ad for you and then run it on Google, on YouTube, on Gmail, display ads, and also discover. Uh, this is overwhelming. All right. And I think, look, I've been running ads on Google for over 10 years now. Um, and what I suggest doing is focusing on one type of ad, becoming really good at that one type of ad. And then from there, you can branch out and try to run other types of ads. So um, let's just click on see more here. And these are all the different types of ads we can run through Google's network. We can do search ads, which is the one that I want to do and what I'm going to show you here right now, because uh, I think these are really effective. Um, a search ad is basically like, let's say someone looks up marketing agency, Philadelphia, right? And so these uh, that pop up here uh, are search ads on Google. So this one here, this one here, this one here, these are all search ads. Even this one as well um, are search ads. Uh, on Google. This is one that I think most people like when you think of Google ads, this is what you think of. Um, this is the one that I'm going to show you right now how to create. Um, but then also we have display ads. So these could pop up like say you're on like CNN's website and an ad pops up on the side. That would be a display ad. Uh, we have video ads that can pop up in YouTube videos. Um, and then also um, app ads, discovery ads, smart ads. They're really kind of going all out on different types of ads but I'm going to just select search here, all right? And if you're looking for something different, that's okay. You can add things in later, but trust me when I say this, um, it's very important to just identify one type of ad and get good at that before trying to do every various different type of ad. So I'm not sure why they push everyone to do performance max. I think they just wanna make a ton of money off of people. Um, so I'm gonna click on search and then I'm going to continue here. So let's click on next. All right, and now we're going to select keywords for our uh, Google ads. Okay. And so um, they've just actually pulled all of these different keywords uh, from our website. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and delete pretty much all of these here because the ad that I want to create is for um, uh, marketing like uh, services in the local Philadelphia area. So hopefully you've gotten to this page. And if you have, this is really important. So when we're entering keywords, this is what people search and this is how we pop up in those search results. So there's three different types. If you click on this or you just hover over this question mark here, you'll see. Um, if we just type in a word, it's going to be a broad match. So like if we type in marketing agency, Philadelphia, um, basically people who search anything somewhat related to this uh, your ad might pop up for that. So like if they search up instead of marketing agency, Philadelphia, maybe they look up like, um, ad agency, Philadelphia, or they look up, uh, digital ads in Philly. It might still show up. Your ad could still pop up when they search for that term. Now, if we do something, uh, we go back up to this question mark, we can use this as a guide here. Uh, if we put it in parentheses or sorry, in, in uh, quotation marks, uh, then it's going to be an exact phrase match. So, a phrase match would be, let's say we want to do um, digital ads agency. And when we put it in these quotation marks, it basically means that the phrase has to match. It can be out of order, but these words have to be in there when someone searches. So when someone searches digital ads agency on Google, our ad might pop up in the sponsored section there. Um, if, we, if someone types in ads digital agency or agency for digital ads, we might still pop up when it has that phrase match. Um, so it doesn't matter on the order. As long as those words are there, uh, your ad can still pop up. And then we have exact match, which is what we would use uh, using brackets. Okay. So if we add in these brackets here, so let's say that we want to do marketing agency Philly, and we put it inside of these brackets. Um, now someone, this is an exact match. Okay. So someone has to literally type in marketing agency, Philly 
for our ad to show up. If they type in marketing agency Philadelphia, our ad's not going to show up because we put it inside of these brackets. So these options of just having it plain, putting quotation marks or adding brackets is going to determine uh, exactly, you know, who is seeing this ad um, if it's, you know, something broad or if you want an exact phrase. So I would go ahead and fill out a bunch of these here. You can go back and edit these later on. Uh, basically, we're just selecting these keywords here. So let me just add in a couple more. Um, let's say that we want to do maybe like, um, okay, so I, I added in a bunch of others there. Um, and I probably will, like if I do decide to run this actually as an ad, I probably will go back and tweak some of these and put more thought into it. But I'm just making this tutorial here today for you. Okay, so as you can see over on the left-hand side, uh, we're currently selecting keywords. Then we're going to create our ad next. We'll set our bid strategy and then also set our budget. Um, so let's scroll down here. And uh, I want to talk about locations and audiences uh, briefly here. All right, so for locations, something to know as a marketer is that the broader the potential market, the cheaper it's going to be for ads. And it goes vice versa there, right? So if, if you are uh, selling a product and you can sell this anywhere in the world, it's going to be cheaper per conversion or per click, whatever you're basing this off of. It's going to be cheaper uh, than if you're trying to like target very specific people. Like if you want to run ads only in New York City, it's going to be more expensive because the group of people is smaller. And so you're just competing against a lot more people for that one specific area. Um, so for me, you know, because we have an ad agency and um, we want to maybe only target people in Pennsylvania and like the tri-state area, uh, what we can do here is let's say we want to do Pennsylvania and let's say we want to do New York. But for some reason, maybe... We don't want New Jersey and no offense. I, I love my Jersey people. Okay. But I'm just using this as an example here. Um, let's say that for some reason you can't do business in a state or an area and you want to avoid it and you don't want to run ads there. Um, you can actually exclude that area. And like, I know I have friends who are tow truck drivers and they don't have like a, li a business license in New Jersey for some reason. Um, and so they, they don't do business there. And so you would exclude that, uh, from, from your uh, list here of, of people that you're looking to target. Um, and so once you figure out your location, and like I said, try to make this as broad as possible if you can, um, because it's going to make your ads cheaper um, and it's going to get more expensive as you whittle down and, and get very niche down into a specific area. And then we do have other options as well. Like, do we want this person to actually be there or are they just interested in that area? Um, so you can mess around with that as well. And then languages, I only want to target English at the moment. Um, and then audience segments is pretty cool. I've seen them label this as other terms as well in the past, but um, this can be really cool. Like if you want maybe parents or uh, let's let's go over to browse here and we can see like basically this is who the person is, right? So if we click on here, we can see like parental status. Are they parents? Yeah, maybe we want parents of like uh, people who are teenagers, right? Uh, I'm not actually going to do that for this one because I'm doing an ad agency. That doesn't make any sense. Um, but you can go through and say like maybe education, right? We want people who uh, maybe have a bachelor's degree, right? Or we want homeowners for some reason. This is really useful for like, if you're doing like ads for a landscaping company, you don't want to be doing this for renters because what type of renter is, is you know, hiring a landscaper, right? So um, this is really cool having the ability to have audience segments um, and then even like employment, company size, industry. You can go really in depth here on these. Um, so that's pretty cool. And uh, you can really go and uh, find some things here. For the sake of this, though, I'm not going to do this because, once again, if you kind of get more niche down and you start to select a lot of things here, it can end up driving up the cost of your ads. Um, so I'm going to keep it pretty broad for now, and I can always add these in uh, later on. Okay. Um, and so then they're going to give us options here. We want search network or also display network. Um, I don't want display ads. This is like, you know, when you are uh, searching for something and like an ad pops up on the side, I don't really want that. Um, I'm going to stick with just search network ads and keep it very simple for now. So once I have that figured out, I'm going to click on done. Okay, and now I'm gonna click on next and the next step here is actually creating an ad. All right, and so now we are creating our search ad. Um, and so you'll see this is gonna look pretty similar. Like if you ended up taking a different route and you did like the power max thing that they wanted you to do, um, you'll probably still have a similar setup here. 
for when you create your ad. I just like it when you whittle it down and just do specifically search ads. Um, so let's go ahead and fill some of this stuff out here. So uh, first of all, we just have our URL for our website that we're sending them to. This doesn't have to be a website. This could be like a specific landing page that you want them to go to. Um, that's totally cool. And then also the display path. So this is basically what shows up on the ad. And they have it here on the sidebar here that we can see. So let's say that we want it to show up as santramedia.com slash uh, marketing, right? And you'll see down here, it'll pop up on the side. There we go. See, it just popped up down here. Okay, so that's what the display path is there. It's what people see when they're clicking on the ad of what domain it's taking them to. Um, and now we're just going to fill out some different headlines. So the headlines are this blue text here. So uh, let me just change these up because they're pulling this from our website, which has a lot of like tutorials and stuff. Um, but let's change it up. And thanks to like all this Google AI, they do give us uh, different um, options, right, for like different things we can do. But let me just fill out some keywords here. And if you're kind of stuck on this and you don't know like what words to use or what phrases to use, then I'm going to give you a big pointer here and it's to not try to reinvent the wheel. Okay. Now what I do, and I always recommend this to any of our clients and people that we work with, um, and viewers here watching this video is don't try to reinvent the wheel. If you want to come up with some different terms for ads, um, you can go and you can like look up things on ChatGPT to get some ideas. But what I actually found to be really effective is just look up who's already running ads in like a different market and then kind of use some of their words or phrases as inspiration. Don't copy them, but use it as inspiration. So like we have a marketing agency in Philadelphia, right? Maybe I will look up marketing agency, um, Texas, right? And let's take a look at some of the ads that people are running there, right? And sometimes we can see things like, hey, th these are like decent ads, right? And maybe uh, we want to use like a word that we think is interesting, like top product marketing agency um, or results driven, right? Or a B2B marketing agency. So we can kind of just use some of these uh, words that they are using as inspiration. This is one of the ways that I think is really great for coming up with types of ads to run, right? Smallish agency, big clients, 450 clients. Um, that's, that's actually a pretty good ad, I think. So um, chances are if people are running ads, they, they probably, you know, are running them for a reason because they're working. So um, like I said, don't try to totally reinvent the wheel. Maybe we can borrow some ideas there. Um, as long as it's like, don't copy someone else's ad if they're in the same market as you. That would be not advised and that's also not cool um so looking like other markets outside of where you are all right so let me just fill out some random headlines and then we'll move on to uh some other sections here okay so i i just filled out three here i would recommend doing about five um but for this i'm just going to keep it simple here and move on to the description section which is going to be this small text down here so let me just fill some things out here as well um, i'm going to delete what they have auto filled for us because this is pulling from our website which is a lot of like uh, web tutorials and things. All right, and now I just filled out some uh, descriptions here. And yeah, these aren't great ones. I, I just did them right now because uh, I wanna just show you for like the purpose of this here. So uh, feel free to fill out a better description than what I did and make it more lengthy and wordy. Um, this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect though. Like the thing you have to realize with running ads is that you're never going to create the perfect first ad. I've seen people spend thousands of dollars to make an ad and then they put it out and it flops and it's like, okay, well, you probably should have just put something out, even if you don't think it's great and then run the ad, learn from it and then start to make little 10% improvements every time. And you do something called AB testing or split testing, uh, basically where you run the old ad against like a new version of the ad. You see which one does better. The new version does better. You stick with that and then you tweak it a little bit again, right? And you add something 10% better every single time uh, until you have the perfect ad. That is how you run ads. Okay. Um, so it's okay if your ad is not absolutely perfect in this first time. All right. We can also add site links as well. Like maybe we want uh, various different like options for people to click on down here. We can have those on there. So I'm not going to do that for the purpose of this ad. You can do that later if you'd like to. Um, and then we can also change up our campaign uh, URLs as well. If we want to send them to a specific page. So I'm going to click on next here and move on. Okay. And so now uh, we're setting a bid strategy. We're getting towards the end here and almost in the uh, campaign dashboard, which is going to be really important. I want to show you some cool things inside of there. Um, but we have to decide what type of bid strategy we want. 
So um, Google tends to push people to go for conversions and you can set up like this Google tag thing uh, to see like what's converting for you. That can be pretty effective. Um, the old school strategy here has been just like clicks or um, uh, impressions. Um, for this, I'm actually going to go for clicks on my ad. Uh, that's just the one that I want. Like if you're doing Google search ads specifically, then clicks is going to be the option that I would go for. Um, but you can go for conversions. It just depends how you build out your funnel and the type of product that you're selling. Um, but I want to just do a cost per click uh, setup here. And so what we also probably want to do um, is set a max cost per click bid limit um, because I already know like how much I'm going to be spending for new customers and like the ad rates right now at the moment. I know that I can probably get clicks for less than five dollars. Um, but if you're not really sure on this, you can leave this blank and you don't have to fill this out. Uh, if you go with conversions, you can also set a target cost per action, which is a, a CPA cost per acquisition of acquiring a new customer. What's like the target, right? For a marketing agency, for us, like I want to acquire customers for $100 or less. And so that's going to be my target. Um, for this though, I'm going for clicks. And so I'm just going to set $5. Um, but as I said, you can leave this blank. You don't have to put this in right now. Um, so I'm going to click on next here and it's going to take us to the budget page um, where they're going to try to get us to spend a lot of money. But what I want you to do, see, look, they're saying that they recommend our average daily budget is $432. Uh, don't do this. Okay. Um, <laughs> because the thing with ads is that you have to start small. Okay. You have to start small so that you can learn over time what ad is effective otherwise you're just lighting money on fire because your first ad is not going to be the best ad of all time you want to set a custom budget and i'm going to do something very small you know my daily budget i might just want twenty dollars a day right and so i want twenty dollars a day and it's still gonna be 140 dollars per week um but i'm going to do this for a week two three weeks until i find out what ad is working the best once I find the right horse, once I find the one that is like a really good ad, that's when you start dumping in a lot of money to run that ad quite a bit. But until you have that really good ad built out, um, just spend enough money so that you have enough data points, um, but don't spend so much that you're just lighting money on fire. Okay. So I'm going to go for $20 a day. You know, you can go for a little bit more if it fits the budget. Um, just don't go too small. Like if you do a dollar a day, you're probably not going to like like no ads are going to get run and you're not even going to have enough data points to see what's working and what's not. Um, all right. And now we are uh, just have to enter in our payment information and then we will get into the Google ads dashboard finally. Uh, and then I can show you around inside of there. Okay. So I entered my credit card info. Um, and then they're also going to ask if you uh, want someone from Google to call you about Google ads. Uh, I personally don't want that. I haven't talked to anyone from Google in a long time. Uh, you, you can, I'm assuming that they're going to try to upsell you on some stuff. So I don't really want any more phone calls and I'm going to click on submit. All right. And so now uh, we have to wait for our ads to get approved by Google. They're just making sure you're not doing anything really stupid and like doing something illegal. So it might take a day or two. Usually it takes less, like usually it's day of, um, even though they say one to two days. Um, and then they're going to ask us to, uh, basically connect to our website so that we can track our conversions and see what's working. So uh, because our site is using WordPress, we're going to do that. You can also set it up now with code if you know how to do that. Um, so I'm going to click on next here and then we're going to have to copy our tracking tag uh, and then place it into our website. Um, this can be a little bit confusing as well. And I understand that. Um, but they do walk you through showing you how to do this on WordPress. And if you're using a different uh, website, like a website builder, they should show you based on the type of website builder that you use to create your website. Um, but if you want to get past this, cause it's annoying, like they don't let you just like skip past this part. Um, if you just click on test connection and then it'll show up red and then let's go down and then click on, I'll do this later, which I do recommend doing this, but like if for some reason you just can't, um, then just, say that you'll do this later and then um, agree and continue to your account and set up your Google tag later. Um, like I said, I, I would recommend doing it like now, um, but you can do it whenever. Uh, and then also sometimes accounts will get flagged for suspicious activity. I don't know why they just flagged me for suspicious activity. It's the first time this has happened. Um, so if that happens, you can fix it and go through that. Um, but this is the Google ads dashboard. Sometimes it can look different. 
as well. Um, they have so many different features and things available, but this is where you will see your ads being run. So right now we will go through policy review once we fix our suspended account. Um, and then it will run those ads for us on campaign number one. So I want to show you some cool things here. Uh, like if we go over to tools, um, and then we go up to planning and we go to something like the keyword planner. I really like the keyword planner. I think it's really effective. Um, so let me show you how to use this. Like, let's say that you want to see what are people searching for? Um, they'll actually show you uh, search volumes and then also you can discover new keywords as well. So let's say like, let's say we want to discover new keywords uh, and I want to say marketing agency, Philadelphia, right? And let's see some keywords related to this and what's working. All right. So they will show us basically the average monthly searches for all these different terms, right? So like for this term, um, they'll show us the different searches for that, for creative agencies, all these different ones, they will show us, um, basically the amount of, um, traffic that each one of these different search terms are getting. So that's pretty useful. Um, let's click back here and let's go and get uh, maybe search volume, uh, for certain terms, right? So let's say we want search volume for, um, Google. How about how to run Google ads? And then check that out. And we can see that on average about a uh, thousand to 10,000 people per month are searching for exactly how to run Google ads. And then also, uh, how much people are paying to be on the top of the page for the search term is about $11 and 53 cents on the low range up to a thousand dollars, which doesn't really seem right, but okay. Um, and so this keyword planner overall is pretty cool. You can mess around with it to, uh, find out various different search traffic and then also get new ideas, um, and, and new keywords that could be pretty useful. So, um, that's what you can do with that tool. There's a lot of other tools on here as well, uh, that you can set up. Um, but let's go back to campaigns here and you can always create new campaigns. So I just showed you how to do that with the search ad. Maybe once you graduate from search ads, you say, you know, I want to start doing other things. I want to start, uh, maybe running ads on YouTube. Well, good thing you can do that. Um, so let's see, you want to get sales and then you can do that. Right. So, uh, that is the basics of running Google ads. Um, let me go ahead and get my account fixed here so that it's not, uh, uh, suspended for uh, suspicious payments. Um, but yeah, that's the basics of running Google ads. If you have any questions, any concerns, any problems, leave some comments down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, I hope this video was valuable to you. I know Google makes it pretty confusing and pretty complicated. So, uh, I'm here to help you. Uh, also, I'm not sure if we're going to have like time to run ads for other people, but I will leave a link below maybe to like a form or something that you can fill out. Um, cause we work with some other agencies that might have some bandwidth to help people run Google ads or other types of ads as well. Um, can't promise on that, but if there is anything that we can offer, I will leave a link to that down below in the description of this video. So thanks for watching. I hope you found some value in this. If you did make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, drop a like on this video and I'll see everybody sometime in a future video.